Hi everyone, in this video we will see some details about netconf and yang. I will explain what is netconf and yang, how to enable this in Cisco devices and how to use it for managing device configuration and we will see some demonstrations as well in the upcoming videos. At the end of this video I will demonstrate how to do a basic hello and get config using netconf and yang. So here in this list you can see netconf supported devices and minimum software versions I'll be using CSR1000V with software version 16.7.1 RESTConf I'll be covering in a separate video in this video we'll see NetConf and Yang so here you can see NetConf is supported by iOS XC XR and NXOS in Cisco and you can see a RFC mentioned here this is RFC for NetConf RFC 6241 we'll open that and have a look into that so NetConf is a protocol which we can use for interacting with networking devices for managing configuration and monitoring the state in a vendor neutral way vendor neutral way means with same set of standard inputs we'll be able to configure any networking devices which supports ietf defined data model we'll see that data model uh, after some time so data model in netconf is yang so first point what you need to understand is netconf is a transport protocol we can say it as a transport protocol or uh, method and yang is a data model so here you can see it provides a mechanism to install manipulate and delete configuration of network devices it uses XML based data encoding for the configuration data as well as protocol messages so we will be able to see a lot of XML data transferring between netconf server and client in our case netconf server is going to be a Cisco device and netconf protocol operations are realized as rpcs rpc stands for remote procedure calls rpc is nothing but a protocol which enables server to client communication so client will be sending a request server will process the request and gives a response that's all you need to understand about rpc for now now if we come down here in the rfc Yeah, here you will be able to see the protocol layer and the protocol layer in secure transport we can see SSH TLS multiple method we will be using SSH and under messages same RPC what I mentioned earlier remote procedure call operations uh, there are multiple operations here it is mentioned edit config this is just an example so edit config get config get there are multiple operations and under content configuration data also comes now here below you can see the yang data modeling language that is another rfc 6020 has been developed for specifying netconf data model and protocol operations covering the operations and content layer of figure one so here you can see yang covers operations and content layer so your operations edit data and content layer will be passing using yang data model now we will go to the rfc of uh, yang data model actually you don't have to worry about creating the yang data model because it will be created by individual vendors or ietf you just need to understand the structure so here you can see yang is a data model used for netconf and netconf rpcs now if you want to see the yang data model or structure here under git there is a repository yang data models so this is the repo we are using for 
getting all the networking devices and vendors to data models here you can see folders like standard and vendors under standards you will be able to see IETF defined data models so I'll go to RFC so here you will be able to see all the IETF defined data models so we'll download and see that and if we go to individual vendors you can see Cisco and XE here individual software version is having a folder so 1671 this is what I'm here you can see the vendor specific data models so to download all these what we'll do we'll just do a, a clone I'll copy this I'll go to the folder 05 python demo this is a folder which I'm using for all my python demos I'll create a folder here called netconf I'll use this folder for all the netconf operations so my terminal is already in uh, 05 python demo I'll go to the folder netconf here I'll just clone the git for that command is git clone the URL yeah it started cloning the complete Yang data model into my local machine Now we'll open this folder and see all the okay. Yeah, this is on download all the Yang files. So we here we will okay, here here we will refer IETF interfaces. Yeah, here you can see IETF interfaces dot yang. This is an actual yang file. You can see how how it uh, structured. So there is a module name, then some details about the file. Then they are importing IETF yang types. We don't have to worry about creating yang file can just consume whatever defined by IETF or individual vendors for configuring it then here you can see container interfaces and under that you can see a description interface parameter key name and in this description you can see this is going to be a unique parameter for individual interfaces the name and similar way you will be able to see description then type then whether it is enabled or not with true or false boolean and all these parameters Now there is another tool which is available to read it in a tree format that is called PyYang. So if you want to install PyYang, you can do you can do is pip install PyYang. So here you are seeing this message because I already installed PyYang and 
you want to see this particular file in a tree format what you can do I'll go to the folder where this is located at confiang standard IETF I'll go to the folder here first you can just check the available operations here by giving hyphen h help so you can see multiple options here so what we are going to do is we are going to format it and we are going to format it in a structured tree so what we will do the command is going to be pyang hyphen and the file name is etf hyphen interfaces dot yeah okay so here you can see so it reads same file which I opened it here but here you can see it in a structured tree format so what that means is so yang data model contains the actual configuration data in a structured form or standardized form so we'll try to understand this so here you can see two main groups like one is interfaces and another is interface state here you can see interfaces are rw these are having read write attribute so you will be able to change the configuration using this but if you see the interface state you can see only you have read only attributes so under read write you can see name name they mentioned as a string then description type then whether it is enabled or not so here the name under rw interface this is going to be a mandatory field because this is going to be a unique identifier for individual interface then this whatever is mentioned as question mark is optional and these all are called data types so there is multiple data types defined in Yang model now you can see some data types like date time interface reference uh, booleans string under read only you will be able to get the configuration details of interfaces name type admin status whether it is enabled or disabled and other statistics so you can use pyang for understanding this now if you want to learn more about pyang there are multiple sources like this is one of the very simple yang file so here you can see under acme system module they have defined a namespace then there is a main container under that there are multiple options we will just try to create it I'll copy this I'll create a file here so acme system dot yang I'll create paste the content here in terminal I'll go to the 
folder where I added the file it is netcon folder here you can see acme systems dot yang I'll execute py yang here hyphen f three yeah this is a simple yang file if you compare this output with the the actual file what we created acme systems you'll be able to understand how how it is structured and how they define each attributes okay i hope uh, at least this was helpful for you to understand what is netconf and yang model So IETF defines standards for netconf configuration using Yang data model and it is going to be consistent across all the vendors. So if you want to see all the standard data models you can go to this folder IETF and verify it. This might be supported by multiple vendors if you use the same data format will be able to configure any networking devices who supports this data model okay for example if you take case of uh, creating vlan so vlans will have attributes like vlan id name description it is going to be same across all the vendors and another case is like if you take the interface configuration so the parameters like l interface is l2 or l3 or if it is l2 what is a vlan id which is L3, what is the IP address, all these values are going to be same across all the vendors. So, all these are defined by I, IETF for pushing the configuration in a standard way. So, many third party applications nowadays access uh, networking devices for automating the configuration. So, netconf will be helpful for standardizing the configuration, I believe. Now we will see a basic demonstration of how to initiate netconf connection to a Cisco device. I have a device with IP 6753 is a configuration you can see I have configured only management IP default route and I have configured a username and password with privilege 15 now before enabling netconf we will try to initiate a connection and see what happens the command to initiate netconf from terminal is ssh hyphen p by default it runs on port 830 and username but on 92 168 67 53 so you can see here device is refusing the connection on port 830 now we'll enable the feature command is netconf hyphen yeah that's all you need to do by default this enables on port 830 if you want even you can customize all that like ssh port and all now we will see the default now let us try to initiate a connection yeah it is asking for password we will give the password we yeah, now got a message from the device so it is sending all the capabilities you can see this is an xml format and it is a hello message and under hello message you can see it is capabilities so these all are the capabilities what we have seen in the yang model you can see there are vendor specific cisco defined yang data models as well as here ietf defined you can see ietf defined data models as well so it 
so when I send a request for netconf so first the netconf server or device sends its capabilities now we need to respond you can notice here even the netconf or xml also is in a structured or hierarchical way you can see uh, under hello you can see capabilities and capabilities attribute starts here and it will end here and this delimiter means at the end of the response now I already have kept certain operations here so you can just copy and paste it what it does it responds to hello message if you respond to hello you won't be getting anything in terminal but if there is a syntax error you will be getting uh, error message or session close so here I have defined multiple operations like get config get specific interface configuration assign IP to another interface etc I'll, I'll show it in another video here we will see only how to get the configuration so to get the configuration I have created this I'll copy this here you can see the operation is get config and get config starts here and it ends in under get config I am giving the source as running config I'll copy and paste it now I got the response it is in XML format so from here I got from here is my response to format it you can use some online tools you can see it in a structured way I'll paste it here and I'll click on preview yeah here you can see the output so it has passed all the output from the XML version is 16.7 then host name username privilege then default gateway interface IP gigabit ethernet 1 the name under interfaces you can see interface name as 1 and other interfaces everything is down you will be able to see and pass the configuration like this there are multiple ways to initiate netconf connection even from python script you will be able to initiate and uh, you can get the output and pass it you will see those in upcoming videos i hope this video was helpful for you to understand how to initiate a netconf connection to a cisco device and get the output thanks for watching see you in the next video